Hi, how's it going? Andrew from Get Into Game Dev here. Um, my last video about comparing C++ and Python seemed to be pretty popular, and I figured maybe I should start doing some just really basic beginner's tutorials on C++. So um, disclaimer, I'm not an expert, um, and the kind of target audience for these videos are maybe people who have some experience in Python and they're looking to go into C++, but some aspects of that are a little intimidating. What I'm going to work on today is basically um, playing around with some settings in Visual Studio and linking in a few libraries. So let's take it one step at a time. One thing we'll need is Visual Studio. Um, hands down, Visual Studio in Windows is the best environment for game development. It's the industry standard. Um, so uh, you can get it for free, of course. Community, community Edition is completely free, that's fine. So we fire this up. It really doesn't matter too much which version we're using. We'll create a new project, empty project. Just keep this as simple as possible. Now, um, it is really great if we have um, in our drive just a folder which is dedicated to development stuff. I call mine dev. It's kind of empty at the moment because I periodically migrate it to another place. Um, okay, so we just go into there. Okay, so we're creating it in dev and it's fine. Good, good. Uh, solution and project in the same directory is probably a good way to go. Okay, so we fire this up and right now we've got absolutely nothing. Now I'll just note here, um, we can choose between two modes, debug release pretty much um, and which platform we're doing. So x64 is 64 bit, x86 is 32 bit for historical reasons. Um, and what we can do is if we right click, we can go to properties. Okay, so there's a few things to be aware of. C++ has a bunch of different language standards. So here we can select which language standard we want to use. Really anything should be fine, especially for this video, we're not really doing anything. Um, C language standard that's fine, perfectly fine. Okay, there are some other bits. Might get back to that later. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we can, you know, like I said, we have got absolutely nothing. So we can um, add a new item of any type, right? Um, Let's just add a CPP file. Okay, and now it comes up. Okay, so like I said, we have um, optimization settings. If we right click on this file and check the um, optimization settings, well, we have debug configuration in which no optimization is here and then release um, where we have um, all the maximum optimizations and everything. And that's set up for us automatically, but it is um, good to, to see. Okay, so let's just go really, really simple. Um, this is kind of like insultingly simple, right? But the point I wanted to get is, okay, so you have your, your standard C++ 101 and, and you do all your programming stuff, but the next thing you do after you get a feel for programming is you will want to add external libraries in order to um, extend the functionality. Because what, you want to take key presses, you want to do graphics and stuff, you need external libraries to handle that stuff. So I'm going to go through a few examples of some types of external libraries we can link to stuff. Okay. So um, I'm going to look at these three. SDL2, actually more than three. SDL2, um, GLM, GLAD, and there's another one, but I'll just grab these for now. 
paste that there. You can download all of these um, online from various places, but I just have them downloaded. And that was the other one. So we'll go one step at a time. Um, SDL2 is an example of like a really classic like version of including a library because it has a like a bunch of um, header files and um, library files. So the way I would include these is we could we could set some some references inside the project to point specifically to these file locations, but the problem is if we take this and we copy paste it onto another computer, it won't update. We'll need to go into Visual Studio and um, change all of those references, which is really a pain in the neck. So what we can do is I'll just grab both of these. They're both important. And in here, I'm going to make a folder which we can call it really whatever we want. My preference is to call it dependencies. Make a folder in there and that will have everything. So in the include, that will have all of the um, header files that we want. In the lib, we're going to just grab everything from the 64-bit. We're not going to worry about the 32-bit. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to rejig this again. So inside dependencies, we'll have our libraries. And then we'll have an include. And inside the include, That's where we're going to have the SDL stuff. Good. Okay. So, let's double checking. Yep, that looks good. So, what we want to do is we want to say something like, um, Something like that, basically. It's complaining at the moment. Um, so what we do is we right click and we go to properties and then we go to um, directories, to the include directories, edit that, create a new entry, but there's a, a special inbuilt macro, which I, I have talked about this in previous videos, but I wanna just get all this info in one spot. So there's a macro called project directory and this macro always updates. When we copy paste the file, that location will automatically change. So this is basically setting it up to use relative paths. Okay, so we have project directory and that includes that final backslash and then we go dependencies and then inside dependencies we want the include. So we go OK. Oh, and by the way, we set this for, oh, great. Set that for all. OK, apply. Possibly have, I've, OK, so let's check. So we're in SDL. And it's just SDL.h, not SDL2. OK, that's fine. Good, awesome. Um, but we also need to include the uh, library file, the .lib file. So we go to the um, library directories and we add a new macro. We go And that's okay, that's that's looking okay so far. There's one last thing we need to do, and this is kind of annoying. Um, even though we have linked to the library, we also need to tell 
the program exactly what the name of the library files are, if that makes sense. So what we do is we go to Uh, the linker, input, additional dependencies, and this is where we we do it. So we go um, stl2.lib and stl2main. Because as we can see here, we have stl2.lib, stl2main. Dot lib, um, and then, well, we could include this if we want. I don't think we need to. Um, but just remember, in the final version, we will need to include this sdl2.dll um, in our our release when we do it. Um, that will need to be probably that will need to be in the same root folder as the um, executable. Alternatively, you could copy paste this into Windows's um, folder where it holds all of its DLLs, and then it will be able to run SDL no matter what um, no matter what sort of location you're running from. But in general, good idea to paste it into the root folder of the final executable. Okay, so we have that there. Okay, so. Um, back to it. So we ran the example and it said there was an error and it said, okay, um, unresolved external symbol SDL main. Um, so that's a bit weird because we have linked everything up properly, right? Hence my confusion. Um, well, what do we do in this case? We can either um, control click inside and that takes us into the actual code and we can read around a little bit. We look around here and from my initial site, there doesn't seem to be anything off. So then we can control click into SDL main. That's the, that's the problem, right? Um, okay. So we have a header guard here. Um, but then there's this thing here. If not defined SDL main handled, um, so there's this, this weird sort of preprocessor flag, which I have never had to touch in my life, but apparently if you do a really bare bones application, um, it, it complains. So we have this thing, define SDL main needed or SDL main available. So the way we actually get around this is we set this flag, we go define um, SDL main handled and um, this is this is a common sort of flavor of this is that some libraries will need special special massaging special finessing if we run this now it runs perfectly fine I am learning C++ yes I am okay cool so we've got SDL SDL is a kind of traditional include because it's got a like a library file and a header file or several header files. Now the next type of include we might want to do is a uh, if we go to this one here, which is called Glad. Now Glad is um, GL additional dependencies basically. Um, that has a source file which is C code. And then it has header files, which you know, they are what they are. So what we can do is we can literally grab this C code and we can just paste it in. And then we can go back and add existing item. Grab that glad.c. Now see, um, there's no folder. On our, on our hard drive that says source, source file. So what Visual Studio Code is doing, sorry, <laughs> what Visual Studio is doing is basically trying to make our lives easier, um, but we can force it to show the actual files just by clicking this button. And that gives us the, the actual physical files on the disk. Now, if we go into glad.c, um, we've got this include, include angle bracket glad, glad.h. So if we look back, when we included um, STL, that had angle brackets as well. That was doing a library search. If we 
if we um, do it with quotations that will do a like relative file path search so what we will do is we'll go back to glad to the include grab everything here and copy it into the dependencies folder okay great cool so now we can just go um, Grab that, and that should work. Good, cool, awesome. So the next type of library we can add is uh, we go to GLM. So GLM is a header only library. Okay, all of the code is in the header files. Cool. So we can just copy that. Paste that in. That's all in the header files. So just to test, we can now go include GLM. And now I'm not really doing anything here, but my test is just, do we get errors? Uh, cannot inc oh, no, we can. Computer is just being slow. And cool, that works, awesome. Um, now the last example I wanted to get to was this one here, stbimage.h. So note, this is just a .h file, um, which means it's just header only. So we should just be able to bang, include it there. Then we go here and we say, come on, add existing item, pop that in there. And now we're going to do a local include, not a library include. So we run this right now and it should, fingers crossed, oh, it doesn't give us an error. Okay, so here's the thing. If we wanted to actually use this library, let's just click in here. Okay, so it says here, the first thing we need to do, um, we need to define STB image implementation before we include it anywhere. So the reason for that is that we might be including we might be including this um, file in, this library in a bunch of different places but we only want the source code to be included in one spot so we define the implementation at the spot where we want the source code to be and then everywhere else we include it we are just kind of defining the function prototypes and stuff so my point here the point that i'm getting to is that we can absolutely include um, let's run this and it works. Cool. So we can absolutely include, um, external libraries. That's the way to go. Um, and I've just gone through some different examples of types. So here we had a traditional library with a lib and a DLL and a H header. Um, and we had to define a special flag there. Um, here we have a header only library. No, sorry. <laughs> a um, like a a library where the source code is in a C file that we include in our project. Here we have just a header only library, and here we have a header only library with a special caveat that we have to do a special define. Um, and when libraries have special caveats, you can either get that by control clicking in, or by reading up the documentation, googling the error code, all of these things. So. Hopefully this is enough to get you confident, get you started. And yeah, they'll let me know if you want to see more videos like this, where I try and fail to do basic things in C++. Um, joking. All the best, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.